So now we're going to work on the <clears throat> some of the statistics behind those parameter estimates. And these are called the ordinary least squares formula. <clears throat> so ordinary least squares is the method that we use to estimate the slope and intercept parameters. Ordinary least squares give unbiased and consistent estimates, and this is, uh, um, these are two terms that we uh, introduced in um, the earlier part of the course. <clears throat> An unbiased estimate does not understate or overstate the true parameter on average. This could give us a, a good estimate of that central tendency of the parameter. And then a consistent estimate convert, <clears throat> con converges towards the true parameter as the sample size increases. Okay, so um, an inconsistent estimate would give us a, would be probably associated with a smaller sample size. And so the larger the sample size, the greater we think our accuracy of our estimates are going to be. Okay, so ordinary least squares, or it's for shorthand, it's called OLS. What it does is it minimizes the sum of the squared errors. And that's going to be termed SSE. We're going to make lots of use of the SSE, the sum of the squared errors. So the error terms, as we defined before, is equal to the actual value of the dependent variable minus the predicted value. And that term squared, and you add those up for all of the data points. Okay, another way of expressing that is it's the squared error term added up over all the data points. Okay, so the sum of these is going to be equal to zero. And so we're going to find, or ordinary least squares finds the co coefficients, so the parameters, that minimizes these squared errors. Okay, and another thing about the ordinary least squares regression line is that it always passes through the mean of the variable. So there'll be one point that represents the mean of the independent variable and the mean of the independent variable, and the regression line will always pass through that. Okay, so the, the slope and the intercept parameters are estimated in this way, and the, the numerator of the slope parameter is the sum of squares from the numerator of the correlation coefficient. So this is the, the, the deviation of each x value from the mean multiplied by the deviation of each y value from the mean. And then that is divided by the sum of the square deviations from x. And if you think about the slope again as the change in y over the change in x, and you kind of did some elimination of terms in the slope model, or in the slope equation, the x of i minus x bar would cancel out, and one of the x i minus x bar terms in the denominator would cancel out. So we're kind of left with the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so that's the how we get the slope estimate, and the, then the intercept estimate, B0, is going to be equal to the mean of y minus that slope estimate times the mean of x. Okay, so we posit, what we're going to do is position the regression line at the mean of the two values, and then using the estimated slope, we're going to find the vertical intercept. Okay, and so far we've defined the sum of squared errors, but there is a complete sum of squares equation that where we can decompose the total sum of squares or the total variation in our model that we're trying to explain into two components, the regression sum of squares which is the variation explained by the regression plus the unexplained sum of squares. Okay, and this can be related, this is similar to the 
decomposition of the total variation in analysis of variance. So recall, in that case, we had J equals more than two classes of a dependent variable. Okay, so if J is the number of classes, <clears throat> the total variation is each of the combinations of individual and classes minus the overall mean. So we're trying to explain differences in means by the explained variation is the difference in the mean of the J classes in the overall mean. And then in analysis of variance, the unexplained variation is the difference in all of the variables from the mean of the J classes. So in regression, we have a similar decomposition. The total variation is each of the values of the dependent variable y and the mean. Okay, The explained variation is the predicted value of y for each individual in the, in the sample minus the mean of y. And then the unexplained is the individual values minus the predicted value. Okay, which is the residual. And if you notice, the right-hand side of the equation is found by adding and subtracting y hat, the predicted value, and then rearranging terms into something that uh, makes sense. Explained variation and unexplained variation. Okay, so we take this logic of the decomposition of the variance and then we can turn those into sum of squares. So the left-hand left side of the decomposition variable, we sum that and add it up over all respondents. That is the total variation, the total sum of squares that we're trying to explain by the regression model. Okay, if we square each of the differences in the predicted values from the mean, mean value, add that up overall the entire sample. That is the explained vari a measure of the explained variation, or called the regression sum of squares. And then already we've already defined the sum of squared errors, which is the unexplained variation. Okay, with this equation, we can construct a what's called the coefficient of determination. This is a measure of the goodness of fit of a regression model. Okay, so the R it's also so the coefficient of determination is better known as R squared, or capital R squared. Okay, and R squared is the ratio of the explained variation SSR divided by the total variation. Okay, and so since the total variation is equal to SSR plus SSE, explained plus unexplained, the larger, the higher the R squared indicates that more of the variation in the dependent variable is being explained by the variation in the independent variable. Okay, so the R squared statistic is gonna range from zero Okay, so it's going to be greater than zero, but less than one. So the closer we can get to one, the better the model fit. Okay, and then just recognizing that we've decomposed the total variation into explained and unexplained. Another way of calculating R squared is by this equation, one minus the unexplained variation divided by the uh, total variation. Okay, and it turns out that in a simple regression model, okay, another term for a simple regression model is a bivariate regression model, where we only have one 
x value, one independent variable, the coefficient of determination, r squared, is going to be equal to the correlation coefficient squared. 